All right, at long last, our last regular homework video, 10.5, Nuclear Chemistry Uses and Risks. So this one is just going to be kind of simple, some uh, important facts about nuclear chemistry that uh, we have to remember. There's no math and nothing really out of the ordinary. It's just some basic stuff. So basic uses of nuclear chemistry. Industrial measurement, nuclear chemistry can be used to monitor the thickness of materials. We already talked a little bit about radioactive dating. Measure the relative proportions of a radioactive isotope to figure out how old it is using half-life. So things like uranium-238, useful for rocks, things that weren't living. Carbon-14 for things that were once alive used for nuclear power. Radiation gives off heat that can be used to move turbines to generate electricity. We use for sterilization. You might have heard about irradiated foods, which will kill off any bacteria that's living in the food. It can be used as tracers in medical procedures. Uh, it can be injected or swallowed, and machines can follow their progress through the body. These, like I said in the previous lesson, you want to have a really short half-life because you don't want nuclear stuff living in your body for a long time. Uh, it can be used as tracers in industry to detect leaks in concealed pipes. So you can you know, inject something nuclear into pipes that are going to move underground and use equipment to detect its presence, and that'll tell you where the pipe's leaking. So instead of chopping up an entire floor to get a pipe, you just have to chop up a small portion of it. And it can be used in radiotherapy to treat cancer. A common one there is cobalt-60. All right, so there are risks and hazards, obviously, with nuclear power. And yeah, they're not usually involved in turning us into Spider-Man. So uh, exposure to radiation can harm living cells. So you have to be really careful when you use it. Alpha, beta, and gamma all can damage or destroy cells. Uh, lower doses can lead to mutations, which is going to lead to cancer. Higher doses can kill cells, which leads to radiation sickness. Uh, after radioactive procedures and the like, where there's radioactive waste, and it has to be stored safely because they can harm the environment. So they have to be packed in certain types of containers, which are going to keep the material from leaking out and buried very deeply to keep them away from us. The fact that they might have long half-lives can make them dangerous for thousands or more of years. Nuclear accidents have long-term effects. Way back when I was in high school, there was a uh, meltdown at a nuclear power plant called Chernobyl, who was in, uh, at the time, still the Soviet Union, but now it's Russia, and it's still problematic for people who are in the region. Uh, there's contaminated farmland and livestock in areas across Western Europe. And it's also estimated that thousands developed cancer as a result of the Chernobyl meltdown. All right, question time. State an advantage state a possible risk. Strontium-90. This is our last regular question time question. Okay? And when, when you're looking at this one, think about strontium-90, think about bones, and think about similar, similar chemical behavior. All right, that brings us to the end of our last regular homework video. All that's left are some review videos you're going to do. But I will see you guys in school.